Hello, in this video, we are going to understand categorical propositions and what do we mean by the quality, quantity and the distribution of terms which are present in the categorical propositions. Now, classical logic deals mainly with arguments based on the relations of classes of objects to one another. And what is a class? Class means a collection of all objects that have some specified characteristic in common. Now, suppose there are two classes, S and P, and in that case, the two classes can be related in three ways. And let's find out what the three ways are. Number one, let the two classes be dogs and mammals. In this case, we can say all of the class dogs is included or contained in the class mammals. But we cannot say vice versa. That is, all mammals are not dogs because there are many other creatures who are mammals. So, all of one class may be included in all of another class. This is one uh, relation. Next, some but not all of the members of one class may be included in another class. For example, all athletes is one class and the other uh, class is all females. So, we cannot say that all athletes are females. Yes, some athletes are females but not all athletes are females. So, some but not all members of one class is included in another class. Thirdly, the two classes may have nothing in common. Thus, the class of all triangles and the class of all circles may be said to be excluded from one another. We have to say that no triangles are circles. So, how do we define categorical proposition? A proposition that can be analyzed as being about classes or categories. Affirming or denying that one class, S, is included in some other class, P, in whole or in part is a categorical proposition. Now, consider the a given argument. No athletes are vegetarians. All football players are athletes. Therefore, no football players are vegetarians. This argument contains three categorical propositions. That is, each premise affirms or denies that some class S is included in some other class P in whole or in part. In this illustrative arguments, the three categorical propositions are about the classes of all athletes, the class of all vegetarians and the class of all football players. In the first proposition, the two classes are athletes and vegetarians. In the second proposition, the two classes are football players and athletes. And in the conclusion, the classes are football players and vegetarians. Now, categorical propositions are of four kinds. A proposition, E proposition, I proposition and O proposition. Number one, all politicians are liars is a A proposition. It is an universal affirmative proposition. It is universal because it is talking about whole of one class, which is politicians in this case. And it is 
the whole of this class politician is included in the other class which is liars. It is written as all S is P where S is the subject term and P is the predicate term. So politicians and liars these two uh, classes are referred to as terms and the terms are subject term or predicate term. Now E proposition the uh, example will be no politicians are liars. This is universal negative proposition in which it is denied. You are denying something and you are denying it universally. That is any member of the class of politicians is a member of the class of liars. This uh, idea is being denied. So it, it asserts that the class S is wholly excluded from the predicate class P. This is the E proposition is one of denial and exclusion among the classes and it is written as no S is P. I proposition. Some politicians are liars. This is a particular affirmative proposition. Why is it particular? Because it is talking about only some members of the class of all politicians and it is not talking about all members. And how much is some? One, two, three, how much? So it is indefinite. What do we mean by some? So in this case, you have to understand some as implying at least one. And it is also affirmative because it is affirming something. It is not denying anything. And uh, I proposition is written as some S is P. Number four, some politicians are not liars. So this is uh, an O proposition. It is particular and negative. You can understand that it is a negative proposition because it is denying something not some and not uh, it is uh, are present in the proposition and also it is particular because they do not refer to politicians universally but only to some members uh, or members of that class the format of o proposition is some s is not p so here is a chart which will help you remember the four types of categorical proposition. All S is P. A is uni universal affirmative. No S is P. E proposition is universal negative. And the particulars are one is affirmative which is some S is P. And the other one is negative which is some S is not P. Notice that in the universal category, one is affirmative A and the other is negative E. And in the particular uh, uh, ones, one is affirmative I and another is negative which is O. The categorical propositions A, E, I and O are represented diagrammatically with the help of Venn diagrams. As of now, we have studied about two terms. So, we have taken two circles. One circle is S, which is the subject, and the other circle is P, which is the predicate. You have to draw them like this, uh, like you see over here, in an interlocking uh, position. Okay. Now, uh, the A proposition which asserts that all S is P shows that portion of S which is outside of P is shaded out, indicating that there are no members of S that are not members of P. So, in this way, this is the uh, Venn diagrammatic representation of A proposition. You have to shade out the portion of S 
which is outside of P. The E proposition is uh, represented in this uh, other, uh, you see the other diagram over here, where only the common portion of the interlocking S and P circles is shaded out. In this way, the E proposition is uh, represented, which uh, shows the mutual exclusion of these two terms, S and P. Remember, when you are uh, talking about universal propositions, both affirmative and negative, you are going to shade the areas concerned. And in, uh, in the case of particulars, you are not going to shade, but you are going to put an X uh, sign uh, in the relevant portions, which we are going to see just now. The diagrammatic representation of I proposition will be like this. Uh, some S is P and in the common area between the two interlocking circles S and P, you just write an X which shows that there is at least one member which is common to S and P. And in the case of O proposition, you have to draw it like the other diagram, the diagram which is below. You can see it. Uh, it indicates that there is at least one member of S that is not a member of P. So it is talking about at least one member of S. At least one member of S that is not all members of S. Had it been all members of S, then you would have had to... Uh, shade the portion which is outside of P. But here, since we are talking about at least one member of S, you have to put a X sign in the S circle which is outside of P. Categorical propositions are determined uh, on the basis of their quality. Now, what is quality? Quality is nothing but uh, the confirmation whether the categorical proposition is an affirmative one or a negative one. So, uh, the affirmative uh, categorical propositions are uh, the universal proposition or SSP A and also the particular affirmative proposition some SS. P. So, if you are asked the quality of these two propositions, A and I, you are going to write they are affirmative ones. And what is the other quality? The other quality is negative. So, uh, uh, no S is P and some S is not P are negative in quality. One is a universal negative, which is the E proposition, and one is a particular negative which is the O proposition. Now, what is quantity? An attribute of every categorical proposition is that it is determined by whether the proposition refers to all members or, or some members. So, basically, quantity is nothing but uh, it is the amount, the how much. So, if it is uh, talking about all members, then the quantity is universal and if it is talking about uh, a few some at least one then the quantity will be particular so quantity wise the universal propositions are a and e because in both the propositions a and e we are talking about all members so it is universal in quantity and the propositions uh, I and O are particular ones, particular in quantity because they are talking about some members and not all. So quantity wise, there are only two, universal or particular. These categorical propositions cannot be written in any arbitrary way. There is a specific format which is known as the standard form uh, in this way, you have to uh, represent the categorical propositions and the terms 
uh, which are mentioned in the proposition. And the format is like this. First, you have to write the quantifier. That is all or some. Then you have to write the subject term. And then there is a term called copula, which is the uh, 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 variation of the verb uh, to be. Uh, uh, you have to join the subject and pred predicate with the help of a verb. That is the copula. And uh, after the copula, you have to mention the predicate term. So this is the general format uh, of the uh, categorical proposition in which they must be represented. Distribution of terms. Distribution is an attribute that describes the relationship between the terms of the categorical proposition. Uh, that is how one term is distributed with regard to the other term. So uh, the proposition all senators are citizen is an A proposition. You will see that in A proposition, you're talking about all S. Okay, all senators as citizens may be written as all S is P. So here you're talking about all S. So we, are, we can say that all of S is distributed. So in A proposition, the subject term is distributed. But it is not saying anything about the P, that is predicate term. So the predicate is not distributed. So let's see how the four propositions are getting distributed with the help of examples. So uh, in this picture that you see, all bananas are fruits. You will see that it is an A proposition. We have seen earlier that in A propositions, the uh, portion of S outside of P is going to be shaded because it is a universal proposition. And uh, uh, here it is diagrammatically uh, uh, given with the help of a Venn diagram. And the subject term is completely distributed. So in A proposition, what is happening? Uh, uh, what is the distribution like? You will say that in A proposition, the subject term is distributed, but the predicate term is not. In E proposition, both the subject and the predicate are distributed. Uh, in no S is P. Uh, okay, now let's take a concrete example. Like no athletes are vegetarians. Athlete is the subject. So it is saying that the whole class of athletes is excluded from the class of vegetarians. And vegetarian is the P term. It is also asserting that the class of uh, vegetarians is also uh, excluded from the class of athletes. So they are talking about both the classes and how they are distributed. So in a proposition, both the subject and the predicate terms are distributed. In I proposition, both the subject term and the predicate terms are undistributed. In some soldiers are cowards, no assertion is being made about all soldiers and no assertion is made about all cowards either. So none of the terms are distributed in I proposition. In O proposition, only the predicate term is distributed. The subject term is not distributed. Some horses are not thoroughbreds. In this O proposition, the terms are horses and thoroughbreds. We are not talking about all horses, but only particular horses over here. So the subject term horses, it is not distributed. The predicate term thoroughbreds is distributed because given the particular horses referred to, the proposition says that 
each and every member of the class of thoroughbreds is not one of those particular horses. So in O proposition, the subject term is not distributed, but the predicate term is distributed. Consider the other uh, example. Some bananas are not fruits. You see, we are talking about some bananas. So we are not talking about the entire subject class. So the subject term bananas is not distributed. But we are uh, saying something about the uh, entire predicate term in this proposition that some bananas are not fruits. We are told something about the entire predicate class, namely the entire class of fruit does not have one of those subject bananas among them. Therefore, in O proposition, the subject term is not distributed but only the predicate term is distributed. So here is a chart uh, for your uh, quick reference as to which proposition is distributed in which way. Uh, so in A proposition, only the subject is distributed. In E proposition, both S and P are distributed. In I proposition, uh, neither the subject nor the predicate is is distributed and in O proposition only the predicate is distributed and not the subject. So here is a uh, is the Venn diagrammatic representation of the four propositions uh, all SSP A proposition, no SSP E proposition, some SSP I proposition and some SS not P O proposition. So with that we come to the end of this video. I hope you have understood the quality, quantity uh, and distribution of categorical propositions. Uh, uh, I have solved uh, some uh, the exercises and the answer is provided in the uh, PDF format. Uh, you will find the link in the description. In the next video, we are going to talk about the traditional square of opposition. And if you find the videos helpful, please subscribe uh, and do, don't forget to comment. Thank you. Bye-bye.